Flashforge sent us this Aquila X2 printer, and I'm excited to have it, so let's do a project with it. For $160, it is a low price printer. And what I have learned about printers like these, this is an Ender 3 style machine, is that you really trade money for time. In other words, in order to get good prints from a machine like this, you're gonna have to spend some time fiddling and twisting and dialing and, and tweaking and, and working on it, working with the machine, really understand what the machine wants, working with the slicer, with the machine, with the filaments, there's so many elements that go into making good prints that it really is a kind of time intensive operation. All that said, I'm pretty sure I can coax good prints out of it. So to shake down the machine, I picked a project that was easy and quick to print. So let's look through my handy dandy book. Let's see here. I made this set of icon faces and I've always wanted to use them in a variety of ways. So I settled on doing this face first and I said, let's use a variety of methods of 3D printing and casting to make multicolored faces like this. While I was at it, I thought I'd do a couple of more. So I got them modeled up in Blender, sliced them in Cura 5, and sent them over to the Aquila X2. Last week I did a rant about how difficult it was to get my new 3D filament printers up and running. And in response, <laughs> this channel has the best audience. You guys stepped up and I got a bunch of offers from guys to help me out. And I really appreciate it very much. I mean, this is the best thing about this YouTube channel is the community and uh, I just can't thank all of you. I'm so grateful and thanks so much for all of the offers to help. The printer is not fully dialed in yet, but these are not bad for a first try. I did them in different sizes and different amounts just to see how they would print and I can already tell you what my obsession in life is going to be. You know me and my obsessive hatred of having to clean up castings. Well, I'm not going to want to clean up these prints any more than I want to clean up castings. And there are all kinds of little artifacts and dingleberries, primarily places like where, they, where the, the loop stops and starts. It leaves this nasty little dingleberry here. Even though these are very, very low, very, very thin, and very, very flat, they still took quite a while. I think it took like 20 or 30 minutes to print each one of these. And I printed them like three or four at a time on the plate. Uh, and it still took a good long time, so I had a brilliant idea. So I said, let's make mold cases around them, pour some rubber, and make rubber molds of these, and we'll compare the resin casts to the 3D prints. Brilliant! You know how I'm always preaching that you never, ever, ever, ever put a model like this into the vacuum chamber? Well, this is one time when I'm gonna. And the reason is, if you look, there's teeny, 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 tiny crevices everywhere you look, little tiny holes like this. This is a solid resin model. You can't hurt it in the vacuum chamber. To make sure that I get down in all of the little fine details, which would be, could be tricky to do. If you didn't have a vacuum pump, you'd have to kind of partially fill it like this and let the rubber flow in to those areas. But it would be slow and tedious and I don't have to bother. So what I'm gonna do, is just flood fill it and not worry too much about trapping air. I'm, I am absolutely trapping air underneath this blanket of rubber. This is what I mean when I say don't ever drape a model in rubber like this because you're trapping air. No doubt. There's no way around it. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And the reason I don't mind doing it in this case is these models I am going to put into the vacuum chamber to pull the air out. What I won't do, however, is fill the entire case. I want to leave some room in the case so when it expands, this rubber has been de-aired. It's mostly all these bubbles that are you seeing are going to rise out. Let's go run those over to the vacuum chamber and pull the air out. Okay, bring the pressure up and let's see what we get. Oh yeah, pulled a pretty good number of bubbles out. Then it's simply going to be a matter of getting these molds topped off. I let this rubber cure overnight, and now we're ready to pull it out and see what we got. Let's see how hard are these going to be to pull out. I'm wagering not too hard, and I was right. They're going to pull right on out. Oh, look at that. Okay, I haven't seen it yet. I don't know what it looks like. What do you guys think? Is it any good? You tell me. Is that any good? Let me see. I had it upside down. <laughs> 
There you go. <laughs> now look at it. Clean as a whistle. Excellente. Ooh, I love it. I love it. All right, same thing. I'll let you see it before I see it. How's it look? Are we beautiful or did I have a, do I have horrible bubbles? Oh, they're perfect. Look at that. See, I got, ooh, these, ten, these little tendrils of rubber, super fine. That just got all the way down in there. That was the advantage of sucking those out with vac. It does work as long as you know you're not going to kill your molds. I don't know about you guys, but I am seeing rubber stamps in our future. How cool would that be? Make rubber stamps with the, your logo, your shop logo, whatever. <laughs> Just go boop, 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 boop. Perfect. All right, we're not going to do stamps today. What we are going to do is we're going to paint these and we're going to cast resin in those. We're going to paint these with acrylic. Now, I don't like to paint acrylic directly onto plastic, at least not resin. Uh, I, admittedly, I come from a resin background, a casting resin background, so those materials are different. This is PLA, never painted PLA in my life. <laughs> First try at everything. But I'm gonna port forward my experience from what I knew in casting resins and painting those. And that is, I like to give them a coat of primer. I have found that the acrylic paint sticks well to sandable primer. No idea what they're going to weigh, so we're just going to pour it. Okay, and that's mixed. I think I have way more than enough res on this first batch. We'll know soon enough. Let's pour her in red. Let that to lay down. Same thing over here. Let's pour this in blue. Okay, these are ready to go. Nice and dry. I love fast setting, fast drying primers. To paint these black, I'm just going to use black gesso from Nova Color. Break out the brushes. Let's see what we got. Got little, I've got all kinds of new, brand new brushes in here, but I don't think I need brand new brushes. Let's just go with some used ones. Now this is good enough. That'll work. You are joining me right in the middle of the paint job, and what I have discovered is that there's no way to put the paint down inside the, the pieces. I thought that was going to be a problem. I was kind of hoping maybe capillary action, if I made the paint thin enough, it would flow in to be beautiful. It doesn't work. It's far easier just to paint the paint in. So let's do some of that. Painting is always best done in thin coats. Black is not ideal to paint on. And since I have to paint the black lines anyway, it seems to me it's going to be much easier to just paint in colors directly on the primer and not do a black undercoat first. So let's do these on white and get them all painted. There's absolutely no magic about what I'm doing here. I'm just going around and painting each area in. And on the black ones, it's taking a lot of coats. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's not easy to paint bright colors over black. So paint the colors first and then the black later. I have all these pieces painted up, but now we need to put the black lines on and I'm going to try something that I hope is going to work. Might fail catastrophically. If it does, you'll know it. You can laugh at me. If it works, then you'll think I'm a genius. So we'll see which way it's going to fly. I'm going to hopefully put paint on a roller. I need more paint than that, huh? But I got just the right amount of paint on this roller. This needs to be coated with paint, but not so coated that it drips. Oh, man. Okay, I'm going to say that the concept is good, but the sponge is too soft. See what it's given me? It's given me... It's, it's making a mess, but I love the black lines. Okay, we're going to have to go with a harder roller. Since I don't have a harder roller, I'm going to have to improvise a harder roller out of this hunk of cardboard. So let's see what happens if I try it with this. From hero to zero in a heartbeat. Let's see what happens. Hey, that worked pretty good. It's not 100% perfect, but 
the defects are easily touched up. I admit, I like doing stupid stuff. Trying stuff out. All right, after some minimal touch-up, I'm calling that a win. There's an industrial process that toy makers use. It's called tampo printing. And I bet it's pretty similar to that. That was a winner. Again, minor, minor, minor flaws that easily, easily painted in. Look how that brings those together. <laughs> Let's keep going, because I'm digging this. I think it really matters that the tube is not, is not hairy. It should not have hairs on it. Any little tiny dingleberries I'm getting are probably from the hairs on the tube. A plastic tube probably would have been even better. Stuff out of the way. But this whole technique shows a lot of promise. You could get, you could get this really dialed in and have some fun with it. Uh, come on, get that snurd out of there. No snurds allowed. Come on. No snurds allowed. Little plastic divot. Okay. And finally, this one. Wow. Hey, I'm pretty pleased. <laughs> not bad. Not perfect, but not bad. And graphically, they look pretty cool. Boy, you would never see, think that those are 3D printed objects. There's just no, no trace of 3D printing on them. All right, hey, pretty good. We went from 3D filament printing to 3D resin printing. We made molds that made a mold. We made a rubber mold from the mold that made the mold. We made castings from the molds. We did hand painting. Uh, we did uh, tampo printing. <laughs> I had a good time. I hope you did too. If you like this video, watch this video next. I hope you learned something. Hope you got something out of it. And I will see you next week. Yes, I will. I will indeed. I said I will, and I will. Oh, Lord Almighty, what a mess. Holy crapola.